on forever. It must go on forever. This, this museum and hot house are part of Glasgow. Yes. It's been here all my life and as I say, it must continue. Where the money comes from, I don't know. Perhaps we'll get some benefactors to come along, not just council, not just government. There must be benefactors out there who could give the money towards this place. I first got involved in this, but by coming here as a child, 1962, when I went to art school, they said that this, that the hot house in there was ready to fall down. And they gave us a sum of, they quoted a sum of money that it would cost. <coughs> And we sent the art school architects down and they said it could be repaired at a fraction of the cost. And unfortunately it would appear that the repairs have never been up to the standard that we would have expected because it should still be in good condition. I have my own views on why the hot house is not in good condition. I shouldn't really quote my views. But let's just say I live in a house over there. And during concerts in the park, that house vibrates. It shakes. The ceiling shakes. You get dust falling from the ceiling. So if my house shakes, there's a long way from the stage. What on earth is the vibration in this building and next door? That's my opinion. I hope you didn't mind me giving it. Well said. But I want, I want this building always to be here. As a child I loved it, as an adult I loved it. And I hope that future generations will enjoy it as much as I did. Thank you. Thank you. 
and gentlemen, honoured guests. It's a great pleasure to be here in Glasgow again and to have the honour of being the herald of the inauguration of a happy and ameliorative scheme of municipal action. No municipality has evidenced greater desire for progression, has uh, more resolutely shown the way to the accomplishment of civic happiness and independence as St. Munger. This building represents a new era in the uh, connection between the corporation and the citizens of Glasgow. Now some might say it uh, was inspired by the People's Palace in London. Now that may be true to an extent, but here in the east end of Glasgow, there has long been an agitation for a municipally managed institution uh, for, for amusement, for instruction, and for recreative purpose. Just as the International Exhibition of uh, 1891 provided a fund for the construction of the art galleries in Kelvin Grove. In like manner, a surplus of £2,700 from the East End Exhibition, held here just five years ago, afforded an opportunity for the launch of a practical scheme for the erection of a People's Palace here in the East End of Glasgow. This building is a sign uh, that the city takes its responsibility seriously to every part and to every class of the great community of which it is privileged to rule. <coughs> the enjoyment which this building will provide uh, will be a major factor in lifting the life of manual workers and others to a higher plane. This is, will be a palace uh, of pleasure and imagination upon which the people can place their affections and which will provide them with a home in which their memories may rest. I declare this building open to the people forever and ever. <laughs>